With access to state-of-the-art tools and technology, the Maker Garden is the perfect place for hobbyists and artisans to design and create. Here to tell us more are Justin and Lisa Riley. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. I just want to, our viewers might be thinking, what the heck is between them? So why don't we start off talking about this 3D printer. Tell us about the printer and then tell us about the Maker Garden. Sure, well a 3D printer uh, is, is fairly new technology. It's been out for, I guess for a couple of years now. But if you can think of anything you want in your head, just think about it, you can design it in 3D software and print it and you can now do it at home. So when you're talking about you can think of anything, you mm -hmm. actually have in there a chest a chess piece yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you print it off. So you said if you lose game pieces instead of buying a new one, you will can this just door print it open up? Right yeah, now? just open it right up. Okay. There you go. So this if you lose that chess printed. piece, yeah, you can just print it off and there you go. You got a new chess piece. <laughs> How long would something like this take to print? Uh, that one took about 45 minutes to print. That is something else. It yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. So tell me about the Maker Garden. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the Maker Garden is an idea that both my wife and I came up with. Um, we saw a need. We've got two little girls at home, and our, their school approached us and said, look, we want to get a 3D printer. Um, we're looking for support from uh, parents. And we looked at it, and we saw my wife, Lisa, has uh, 20 years' experience in the 3D animation world. And we said, well, we can help out here. And we thought, as opposed to just helping them choose what a 3D, pr 3D printer they should buy, why don't we help them teach them how to use the software to make the stuff because I think that's that's the missing link and we can we can help children and we can help the teachers uh, facilitate that learning how to how to be creative that uh, that design thinking capability and so that's what the maker garden is we want to bring that to the schools and we want to bring it to the public as well and when you're talking about the maker garden and the maker space it's more than just 3d printer yep. so when you describe it Lisa how would you describe the maker space in the maker garden um, the maker space I would consider if you think about it, you go to a gym you have access to all the equipment at the gym uh, the maker space would be the same thing so you have access to all the tools so everything from woodworking CNC machines laser cutters 3d printers computers software also think about traditional art um, easels um, pottery uh, pottery wheels um, so it's a place where you can really make anything um, there's a big revival of the do-it-yourself movement that we saw many years ago um, and this is sort of coming up as a more uh, technological makerspace so we also have electronics robotics things that we didn't really see before but it's becoming more and more important to today as well as the future of what making. have been some of the best creations you've seen come out of it from kids well, I think the best one is this this girl out of the United States, this Alexis Lewis. Um, how old is she? She's 16 years old. Wow. And she, she, she used empathy. She, she saw a problem. One of the things that really disturbed her was the number of people that die in fires. Mm. And she thought, what, what can I do to um, help uh, save people? Yep. And she thought about, she, she looked at the statistics, and they say 80% of people that die in fires die, or, die from the smoke. They don't die from the fire. And the best way to, to reduce that is just get them a mask. But how do you get, mm -hmm. how does a firefighter get someone in a building a mask? Well, she 3D printed a little ball that snaps together and inside uh, she would put the mask in a glow stick. Um, but she had to go through a number of iterations to figure out how to make this work because the round ball, she would throw it and it wouldn't, wouldn't make it into the window. Mm -hmm. Through a number of different designs, she created more of a football shape and she ended up, the firefighters now can throw these things through a third, third story window and get these things in through the window. You think about how many hundreds if not thousands of lives she's going to wow. save just by thinking empathetically to the challenge and coming up with some designs. And I think kids are, kids are going to solve all the problems in the world or the majority <laughs> of the problems. So they just think differently than adults. Yeah. I think it's great. We just need to get them the tools to help their ideas come to fruition. And I think what's important um, in, in her case as well is that um, you don't need to even purchase anything, really. Um, it's nice to have a 3D printer at your home. Uh, there are tons of 3D printing services that you can basically send your file to. They'll print it for you if you don't have the money up front. Um, the software that she used is Autodesk's Tinkercad, which is an online um, software program. It's a CAD program that's so actually it's designed easy to for do kids. And it is possible. And we're yeah. out of time. Thank oh. you so much <laughs> okay. for being here with us today. And that's the end of our show. Thank you to all of our special guests for stopping by and to you at home for watching. I'm Denise Merrick, and we'll see you next time.